proof that jute as a fiber has untapped potential and unconventional usage only now being recognized. For over a hundred years, these barges have been a familiar sight. Down the river Hooghly they travel, transporting jute. For along the banks of this river sprouted jute mills, which from the days of the British Raj have been inextricably linked to India's economic growth. These mills and the fibre they processed and spun have sustained and supported the lives of countless million Indians. India has always been the world's largest producer of jute, a golden fibre, whose uses are varied and manifold. The Indian production accounts for almost 40% of the total output, and jute as a cash crop has always played a major role in the agricultural sector of certain regions. Over one million hectares of cultivated land in West Bengal, Orissa, Assam, Tripura, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Andhra Pradesh are used for jute cultivation. Over 4 million farmers are supported by this crop and the jute industry is an example of an organized sector with almost 70 jute mills and 250,000 workers. The rise in jute production from the 1950s has been remarkable, increasing from 33 lakh bales in 1950 to 90 lakh bales in 1991. In the context of the Indian economy, jute has played a dominant role and has been a major foreign exchange earner. In fact, till the middle of the 1970s, the jute industry was predominantly export-oriented, with around 75% of its production going into the export market. Even today, jute exports earn 3,000 million rupees annually. But in the last few years, declining consumption of jute in the developed countries has eroded jute's preeminence. Uh, till now, uh, jute has been seen uh, mainly as a packaging material, uh, hessian, sacking, etc., both for the domestic market and for exports. But uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the increasing competition from synthetics, uh, um, high density polythene uh, uh, and other products, jute as a packaging material has got very constricted market. The market is sort of stable or it is coming down and it is not able to hold on. So, hence the need for uh, changing the image of jute. An industry with such a huge outlay in terms of money and manpower is vital to the nation's development. And there was consensus with the policy makers that this industry must be revitalized and rejuvenated. As a part of this effort, the government of India turned towards the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. UNDP the central planning, funding and coordinating agency for technical cooperation by the entire UN system has been in India since the 1950s. We are mainly to train people, to provide uh, transfer of know-how and technologies, to uh, introduce innovations and uh, modern, uh, modernization of, for instance, administration and similar activities. We support quite a number of projects in India. At any one moment, we have perhaps 100 projects going. We call them program and projects. So we have a very large program for quite a number of years. The seed for the intervention in the jute sector was sown in a pilot UNDP-assisted project set up in 1987 at the Indian Jute Industries Research Association, IJIRA, in Calcutta. The project generated interactions between the government of India and UNDP, resulting in Irv Koons, senior advisor to the UNDP administrator, touring India. His brainstorming in New York with experts from various disciplines, together with the study of the ground realities, formed the basis of the Koons mission report. The result of that, with all these people in this brainstorming session, was that we came up with uh, first place, uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of ideas that might be potential. And we noted them all down and so forth, and I put this in a, in a report, sent it to the government of India, but at the bottom of it I said, all of these are sky blue thinking. We don't know if it's feasible. And UNDP and the government of India said, well, come over here and tell us whether you think it's feasible. So I got the proper experts 
And we came over with a mission and very carefully um, investigated all the different areas of Jude. And we investigated the nature, the personality of the people involved. And we came back with a feeling that uh, there's so much enthusiasm uh, that what we had suggested was not only feasible five years from now, it might be feasible one year and two years from now. The thrust of this report's recommendation was to place jute in the market as an integral part of the multi-fiber textile scenario. Further, the Kuhn's report recognized that diversification of jute products by manufacturing value-added products for new end uses would form the core of the strategy to bring jute back to its preeminent position as the mainstay of the Indian economy. This sector can stand on its own leg without depending upon anybody's support if it seeks to diversify. And that's a justification in itself. And such a diversification leads to production of value-added items, economic viability and efficient operations of mills and emergence of new class of entrepreneurs all over the country using jute as a fiber in their operations. By the middle of 1991, a liberal economic policy had been announced by the government of India. And this liberal economic atmosphere was seen as an ideal launching pad for the new Jute Action Plan. A long-term strategy had been developed and spelt out. UNDP endorsed such a move, as the proposed program addressed many of its major mandates, namely reviving a sector with immense human resource potential and widest human impact. It has, uh, uh, it has great importance in terms of the number of people who are involved in it. Uh, we see very much uh, the uh, human development aspect of uh, the jute uh, sector. Uh, first and foremost, of course, training people, uh, upgrading their skills, but also providing them with better income, the rural uh, people, the farmers, and uh, uh, as well as the laborers at the industry. So there's certainly an employment potential, social aspect of it, uh, which is very important. UNDP committed 23 million US dollars and the Indian government matched it with a rupees 58 crores investment to launch a national program to be implemented between 1992 and 1997. The key to this strategy of revitalizing the jute industry was diversification identifying products which were jute-based but conceived in the textile and non-textile spheres. The concept of jute as a complementary fiber to cotton and synthetic yarns allowed it to be developed into the holistic world of garments, textile, handloom and related items. In Calcutta, the Champdani mill is an example of the innovative use of jute. The diversification program launched by this company is today a success story. By identifying key areas, the mill has used jute as basic raw material for soft luggage manufacturers. The blending of jute with other yarns such as viscous, cotton, polyester create fabrics which are used in upholstery and apparels. These blended fabrics also form the basis of the thrust of using jute in the high fashion garment industry. The novel use of jute creates economic potential which will ultimately have a multiplier effect. One of the oldest jute mills in Calcutta is the Birla jute mill and the jute felt manufactured here is exported to western countries where it is used for designing car panels and interiors. The 1993 Cadillac, the interior paneling is made of jute. Uh, the, um, the BMW, the Mercedes-Benz, and so forth, uh, also have interior panels like that. We have many areas in which we've already 
been able to see products. The vital bulwark on which the jute diversification plan is based is research and development. The jute industry in the past has been ably assisted by R&D from institutions created to look after this aspect. Nevertheless, the action plan recognizes that new avenues of utilization of jute will entail identification of new jute products, continuous upgrading of technologies, and the need to make all these products commercially acceptable. Apart from involvement of experts and international technological assistance, the institutes which have in the past helped the textile industry were roped in as well. Tasks are clear, mandate is clear, and India is a vast country where the textile industry is very big, jute industry is also considerably big, located although in a particular area, and there have been uh, a lot of coordination all these years uh, in regard to textile research and development. So this program also will achieve that purpose. We have developed a lot of experience in the cotton textile sector. We feel that uh, an application of these experiences in the jute sector will be very good for the jute economy. And so the, the research now basically is not fundamental research. It is research based on translating the cotton textiles experience to jute wherever applicable. The focus was to ensure that all R&D would be application oriented. Towards this, a close link is to be established between the R&D institutes and the mills where their research findings are to be implemented. A case in point is the fabrics today being manufactured in some of the mills. This is the fruition of the efforts by the Bombay Textile Research Association, BITRA. The polymers developed by BITRA are now being used to treat jute so that it matches the finish of cotton and other textiles, making it both user-friendly and up to consumer expectations. The computer-aided graphic center here was servicing the needs of the textile industry. Today, the patterns and designs being evolved are being offered to the jute mills for their produce. Only such close collaboration between the industry and the research institutes will help give jute the poise and class required to meet the exacting standards and expectations of the international market. Ijira in Calcutta is the premier jute research institution in India. Set up in 1937, in the past Ijira has been responsible for identifying and improving the basic characteristics of jute. Among its significant product developments has been making jute reinforced plastics to manufacture rigid structures. This principle can be applied in the making of packing boxes, furniture and door panels among other things. The South India Textile Research Association, Citra, in Coimbatore, has been engaged in adapting cotton spinning machines to make them compatible to the use of jute fibre. And the Ahmedabad Textile Research Association, Atira, along with Ijira, are experimenting with Arvind Mills in using jute in their denim products. Yet the bottom line to any industry is people. Human resource development thus becomes a crucial area. Training workers, motivating them to see jute as a raw material for handicrafts, encouraging entrepreneurs. Transmission of technology has got to take place through two different routes. One, the entrepreneurs who are involved, who have financial stakes. And number two, through the workers and artisans and executives and technical personnel who would be assisting the entrepreneurs and managements in fulfilling or achieving the goals and objectives. The handloom sector near Coimbatore has been identified as a test case. The PSG College of Technology works closely with the weavers in Bhavani. The cotton floor mats producers are being convinced that jute cotton unions makes equally acceptable and attractive dharis and the weavers' cooperatives are being roped in to train the workers for dyeing and weaving of jute yarn. 100 kilometers from Coimbatore in Chennimalai, the cotton-based handicrafts are also being encouraged to use jute fiber as well.
The aim is to create a resource center base and grassroots level entrepreneurship with jute as an indispensable fiber. The eco-friendly nature of jute makes it an eminently suitable substitute for paper and timber. The biodegradable quality of jute makes it an attractive proposition in a world traumatized and concerned with the ravages of environmental degradation. In this atmosphere, the need to project this eco-friendly nature of jute not only becomes important, but a major selling point. It's the right time for us to go marketing abroad with this item because it is eco-friendly, it is a green fiber and we can use that fact because of the current consciousness in Europe and elsewhere uh, for this fiber. The success of this action plan will to a large degree depend on convincing the domestic and international market and the consumers that jute is a multi-dimensional fiber. The National Center for Jute Diversification, NCJD, has been set up as a nodal agency precisely towards creating the integrated apparatus so essential if all the various elements are to be drawn together to achieve this objective. The NCJD has been essentially created with the twin objectives of transfer of technology from the R&D institutions in the textile and jute sector along with the aim of creating a new class of entrepreneurs. Through this institution, we envisage a lot of linkages to be established with the state level organizations who will be giving subsidy and other incentives to the entrepreneurs, financial institutions who will be giving term loan, and other facilities and marketing organizations who would be interested in getting to know about this new product. So from all angles, this would be the pivotal organization. NCJD will be a catalyst whose work will be crucial, for its dynamism will be reflected in propelling the jute producers and industry towards and through the uncharted course of its future destiny and in the process convincingly demonstrate that jute, the golden fiber, is truly the fiber of the future. I personally feel very strong about the prospects. I feel it's an extremely, I would not call it a gamble, I would say it's an extremely good effort that we are making which is certain to produce excellent results.